So what do you do for a living? Huh? And uh, when you're not at the office, what do you do for a living? And what do you do then? And all of the things that seemingly people have to put together in one lifetime these days. Like, for example, a working mom, Monica Lindstrom. What does that mean, working mom? Let me see. A practicing attorney, judge pro tem, broadcast personality on KTAR, mm -hmm. mom, wife. What's the hardest of all of them? Oh, gosh. I would say definitely being a mom. It takes the most energy, the most love. And uh, when you're a new mom, meaning I've only been a mom for a little over five years, it's the learning curve. Just trying to learn everything and the stress of making sure, okay, is my son okay? Am I doing it right? Am I teaching him right? You know, that's, that's probably the hardest part is being a mommy and dealing with always wanting to make sure you're doing the right thing. You have a five-year-old and? And Colt is almost three. So it's fun. Did you ever, as a professional, uh, as a practicing attorney, as a prosecutor in courtroom uh, activity, did you ever think, you know what, I couldn't possibly do this and be a mom? No, I had no idea. When I, I went right from high school into college, right into law school, right out of law, law school, right to the prosecutor's office. So I thought, I'm the professional, I'm going to be a lawyer forever. I couldn't imagine working part time or not at all. I've worked so hard for this. And then the minute I had Rhett, and you remember way back when, when I was pregnant and I had him. One of our um, other interviews. Yes, yes. Um, things just changed. And I realized that I don't want to be a lawyer full time. I really want to be present with my children and be a mommy too. How do you manage to also be a wife? Oh, well, probably, it definitely falls under the mommy. I mean, I know that that's a terrible thing to say to some, but it's true. You mean as far as priorities are yes, concerned? Yes, as far as priorities. So you think your husband can take care of himself better than the kids? Oh, absolutely. Does that's a no-brainer. So? Yes, yes. My husband is so loving and so supportive of everything I do. And because of him, I'm able to work part time and to do the radio stuff and the TV stuff and all my social media and still raise the children. I, if I didn't have him, I wouldn't be nearly as happy and able to do these things. But you know, looking at you in particular with all of those things, mm -hmm. it would be easy to understand that a viewer of yours, uh, a reader of yours, mm -hmm. A listener to you would say, for crying out loud, she's got it all, and I'm sitting here with gravy stains on her apron, <laughs> and her husband is saying, what about me? Doesn't your husband ever say, what about me? No. My husband is very selfless. Everything he does is really for the family, and he... He's very intuitive. He understands when I'm doing something for the kids or for the family because the only other person in this world that loves my children as much as I do is my husband. So he recognizes that. Now, there are times where he'll come up and go, hi, can I have some attention over here? Remember me? And I'll go, oh my gosh, son, I'm sorry. Date night, let's go do something. So he does raise that flag every once in a while. but. Um, and you know what, actually, I need him to raise that flag sometimes because I am so consumed with making sure everything is great with the kids, making sure social media, my blog, you know, the radio, everything, that I need that partner to say, hey, you need to throw some attention over here. Okay, but the question that we ask you on this program that we do regularly on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. we say, what's it like? And we wanted you to come in to say, what's it like being a working mom? Because you're about as much of a working mom as anybody that I know. I now ask you the subtext. What's it like being married to a saint? <laughs> That's funny. I have no idea because I'm not married to one. No, but you're just talking about the qualities that that lady with the gravy stains on her apron says, well, wait a minute, hold it. For crying out loud, my husband is after me because he feels as if he's being left out. Well, I guess I chose very well. Uh, my husband recognizes that we're a family, but we're also kind of a business in this sense. We each have our roles. We each have the things that we have to do for our family, and we need to support each other in that. 
would he like it if I made more money? Oh, tell me, yes, of course he would because then he wouldn't have to work quite as hard. So we have our challenges, we have our arguments, but we waited until we were in our 30s to get married. Mm -hmm. We chose wisely and we fit together well. I mean, our philosophies and our beliefs are similar. So There's a young Monica Lindstrom watching right now and she is about to go into graduate school and she's thinking in terms of a major career, time consuming career. But she wants to be married. She wants to be a mom too. advise her. Finish your school before you have children if you can uh, so that you're not split in your responsibilities. You can focus completely on one and then move on to the other. That, that's what I did. It worked for me. Will it work for everybody? I don't know. But to be successful in your career and successful as a mommy, you have to be able to handle your schedule and to prioritize what's important to you. What's your husband's name? Michael. Michael, as far as I'm concerned, she married a saint. Maybe you should come in the next time and I'll ask, what's it like being married to a working mother? I'm Pat McMahon.